Hello, my name is Steve Bigelow with the Candlestick Forum. Got a waffling market, but it's still below the T line. So, as we saw on Friday, we had a big bullish Harami positive trading that could tell us the selling had stopped. However, there was two factors that did not confirm. One, hadn't gotten to the oversold area yet. And two, the fact that they didn't close it above the T-line. That made today's open very important to see whether this was now a double bottom at the same level it bottomed out before, or whether they were still failing at the T-line and obviously they failed at the T-line. What was even a stronger selling signal was when we saw the NASDAQ started trading off, it had a bearish flutter kicker signal, strong downtrend. Today, notice how it gapped down below Friday's open and went in this direction. That's your bearish trend kicker signal, implying there's still gonna be a lot more downside. And that's also evident in the biggies like Apple. It was your bearish flutter kicker signal. They opened up, failed at the uh, T-line on uh, Thursday. And then notice what they did today. They opened it below Friday's open and went the opposite direction. Also strong selling indication, there's gonna be more downside. NVIDIA, another biggie. Bearish flutter kicker signal, doji gap down, still heading in the downward direction. Now not just pointing these out as shorts, but these are the ones that everybody's watching, everybody's trading. And when they're selling those off, that means kind of the general consensus in the market is very sentiment. Uh, we're probably still heading, heading lower. So the other side of that coin is, when do you start taking profits? Well, you can see on our short position of net with the hanging man gap down, gap down from a doji. However, look where the probabilities are starting to change. Market was selling off hard today and they did kind of a morning star signal on Friday. Sold it off some today, but still traded it up. Just very simple logic says, the probabilities of being short are starting to go against you. You've got buy signals showing up in the oversold area away from the T-line. Take profits, and move on to something that has better probabilities. Same scenario on the upside. The trucking or the uh, tank stocks, the shipping stocks were acting well. But now we were up here in the overbought area and we saw a bearish engulfing signal on Sting. What were the probabilities? They were changing. Take profits and move on to something better. And here's something that you always wanna keep in mind. We re had recommended ATHM, but the fact that today, after kind of failing up here, it needed to open positive and keep pushing in that direction. Anytime you see a gap down, especially in the overbought area, below the previous day's open, the probabilities are extremely high. You wanna be closing out that position as fast as possible. Logic says, if you're in an uptrend, they shouldn't be gapping down through the previous day's open. So what do you stay short in? Observe the obvious. That's a, a term that we use quite a bit because we can see exactly what's happening in Bidu where they could never get back up above the 50. And now they could not get back up above the T-line. On Thursday, it looked a little bit dicey but it never was able to close above the T-line. Now they're gapping it down. That's telling us, eh, look for this level and maybe this level. Obviously, when we can see what's happening in investor sentiment, the further they continue to take, keep it down below the T-line, the more the panic selling starts to get in. That's where things like a dumpling top, as in our recommendation today of going short our short on ARCT was based upon human nature. If a dumpling tops forming, that's pretty much telling you the opposite of a fry pan bottom, that investor sentiment is getting weaker, weaker, weaker until they start breaking it down. That's where the big price moves occur. 
So right now, you want to stay predominantly short because as we have seen in the NASDAQ, the alert was the close below the T-line. Then we had a bearish flutter kicker signal. Today, we had a bearish trend kicker, which tells you there's more downside. Where's the obvious target? Down here at the 200-day moving average. If that's the case, you want to maintain your short positions because of the likelihood they're going to take, take the market down further. Uh, this coming weekend, October, whatever that is, October 9th, we are going to be doing a training session on which option strategies do you apply to the appropriate candlestick signals and patterns. If a stock's going down, the buying puts is not your best strategy. Doing spreads or combinations of puts and uh, put spreads are uh, much better. This is just common sense logic of the simple trading strategies that you can put in place and make a lot more money with your option trading, knowing what strategy to put in on at the appropriate time. That'll be it. We'll see you in the chat rooms.